addresses, phone numbers, and at least you've got that out of sight. So if nothing else, you've met the reality. Okay, can I just do a quick sweep, and I mean sweep as in sweep, in terms of what you'd like to get out of today's session, because obviously, you know, I need to, my exit is blocked slightly here, actually. Um, but I'll, I'll, yeah, just need to check that I'm not actually going to stuff up completely and not meet your needs. Um, so, who, which table would like to go first? Somebody on, on each of the tables would be great if you could tell me what you're looking to get out of today's session. Oh, I just heard your voices out loud, so you feel safe. <laughs> go on, say it quietly. Something to do tomorrow. Sorry, something you can do tomorrow. Excellent. Okay, something you can do tomorrow. Anything else? I'll think about how to engage more students. Engaging more students, okay. Anything else from this side of the room? This side of the room. Look at me making eye contact. There we go. Something for the top end, the high achievers. Okay, something for the high achievers. All right. Okay, all right. Well, hopefully there will be. Now, teach me a bit different, not least because, you know, you, you plan for a session that's going to be, you know, 50 minutes, maybe an hour if you're really lucky. And then, you know, the keynote speaker overruns slightly. Blame the technology. I've got to finish at 10 2. Yeah, 10 2. Okay, that'll be challenging. That'll be great. So, yeah, let's go for it. What I wanted to do for you today, and hopefully there is some takeaway stuff for you, as well as some stuff that's going to enable you to just hang on to and think and mull over. I wanted to share with you my latest thinking. So, um, those of you who've read my blog and have engaged with me on Twitter that way will know that I've been talking a little bit about this thing, marginal gains. Um, can I just have a show of hands of people who are aware of the educational chat that's been going on around marginal gains? Marginal gains. Okay, quite a few of you. Who doesn't have a clue what marginal gains are all about? Okay, that's okay. It's not a problem. Is there somebody on each table... Right, okay, brilliant. 30 seconds. Those of you who have heard of marginal gains in an educational context, could you please now explain your understanding as it is, big challenge, this is a nice challenge here, you're using prior learning, okay, you're using prior learning, and you put your people on the spot a little bit, but in the same way, you want to say hello to each other. You've got 30 seconds-ish, just to share your understanding. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to and I'll show you how I'm yeah, you're good. Okay, all right, lovely. Just a quick show of hands, just to see how many people can now say that they, they've heard of and know a little bit more about marginal gains as a result of that conversation. Yeah, in okay, right, excellent, okay. Um, just rather than me talk about it, I've got a quick clip that's, um, that somebody sourced for me on quick, um, Twitter from the inspiration for this and the main man himself. So just have a listen. Can we really figure out what we take to win whatever it is we want to do? then prioritise because you know you can't win anything with everything. You know, you will lose more than you win, that's for sure. So decide what you want to win and when. And then we work back to where we are today and look at the gap between where we are today and what we want to win and, and create a plan and execute it. Now I know you're all about marginal gains. Just explain to me what that means. What, sort of, what are the tiny details that you look for in your coaching? Well, the whole principle of marginal gains came from the idea that if you broke down everything that would impact on a site in performance, absolutely everything you could think of, and then you improved every little thing by 1%, when you clump it all together, you're going to get quite a significant increase in performance. So we set about looking at everything we could. I mean, some, some things are fundamental like fitness, nutrition, you know, uh, biomechanics, etc. But there are other things which might seem, you know, rather periphery, but very, very important. So 
you know, posture when you sleep, having the right pillow, having the same pillow, so you don't sleep on different pillows all the time when you move from hotel to hotel in training. Uh, hygiene is extremely important. So how do you know how do you generally know how to really know how to clean your hands? And when you wash your hands, if you do ask people to wash their hands, there's always if you put down on the mask and put a little bit between the hands at the base of the thumb, it was always that people don't wash, you know. So if you know all those things, you're gonna get ill a little bit less. And they're all little things, but if you clump them all together, you improve. How on earth did you factor in the Tour de France to start with and then... OK, I'm going to stop him there. A little bit on the obsessive side, <laughs> so fair. But hey, look at the success he's had. Right, so that kind of way of thinking got me thinking, got some other people I know um, thinking on Twitter as well. Um, and I thought, well, what does that look like? And I've done a made up, this is totally made up, OK? This is um, just a picture of a graph as opposed to a graph, OK? So I thought, does that make sense? It's not an accurate graph, it's, it is totally made up. Um, so I thought, well, can we break down what we do in schools and teaching and learning into the kind of big areas? You know when people say, oh, I need some help with questioning, and questioning's not great. And you say, okay, that's fine. You go in, you'll observe a lesson, or you work with a teacher, and look at questioning, and you come out, you say, well, you could ask a few more open-order questions, a bit higher-order questions, and you come away again. But you don't actually have a conversation that takes you into, well, what makes a really cracking question? And what am I looking for that's going to tell me that it really was an excellent question? So it's about unpicking all that stuff. Just like Dave Brells was talking about, right, well, they need to be ill less. How can we make sure that they are a bit more healthy? Well, one of the, one of the things we can do is get them to wash their hands properly. And then, obviously, he's talked about quite a lot. You can tell because he's really into washing his hands quite a lot. Um, and so that, that got me thinking about all these things. So all I've done is had a think about different aspects of teaching and learning. And this is very much in development at the moment. So I'd love it if one of, the, one of my outcomes from tonight is that you perhaps take away something and you think about something that you do and, and something maybe that's absolutely standard for your teaching practice and that you do every day. And you think about how you can actually improve on that, how you can make that a little bit better and what it would look like if it was, just that one thing, just that little thing. And it ties into a lot of the work that I do around action research. It's about getting right to the heart of some of the things that perhaps we intuitively do and we do every day and we never really consider ways in which we might just tweak it, just change it a little bit to have better impact, to have more impact. And also, in doing that, communicating that to our students, our pupils, to say, that's what it looks like. So we can seize on it when it happens. Or when it doesn't happen, we can actually give those tiny steps that students need to be able to make those improvements. That's what we're seeking all the time. So I've had a look at some of these areas, and um, some of you would have seen on the blog, there's some stuff around so that. Some, I heard some people talking about so that earlier on as well, and thinking about learning outcomes. So I'm just going to run through, literally, um, no, not literally, um, some of these aspects, and just give you my latest thinking on it, if that's all right with you. So that you can take that away, mull it, think about how it affects your own practice. And maybe just tomorrow, we talk about taking something away for tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow, all you'll do is just think, what, what is a really outstanding outcome for that particular thing going to look like? What do I mean by a quality question or a quality response? Or what do I mean by a quality listener? And what are the key components that go into that? And how can I communicate that to the young people in front of me? so that I'm being fair to them in terms of communicating my expectations, which is another blog post, which is part of marginal gains and things around expectations. So, with that in mind, I wanted to have a look at the process of how we get this going. I'm skipping through some slides, you see, because we haven't got much time, so I want to give you some stuff that you can take away. So, I was on a learning walk, well, I've done quite a few learning walks recently in lots of different schools, so I have the honour and privilege of being able to work in lots and lots of different schools, primary, secondary and special. So, I'm in and out all the time, doing lots of learning walks and seeing lots of teaching, and, and something started to come to me as I was doing it, which was looking at learning outcomes and learning objectives. And I was sitting there, and I took on the persona of a belligerent 14-year-old, which, for those of you who know me quite well, wouldn't have been a hard leap at all. It wasn't exactly role-play, really. Um, so I'm sitting there as a belligerent 14-year-old, looking at the learning outcome that might have said to be able to analyse this text, or to be able to calculate X number. And I'm going, okay. And I, in my head, I went, so what? So what? 
So yeah, I can do that. So what? What does it mean to me? How can I own that? How can it mean anything to me? Can that really? And a lot of the conversations I've had with teachers have been around making learning relevant, doing the what's in it for me. But actually, we talk about the what's in it for me, but actually do we have conversations about how we actually make that connection between what we're doing in the classroom and what it means to you sitting there, you sitting there, and you sitting there. So that you can actually go, okay, I can see what it means to me, so I can do something else that Brailsford talks about, which is owning my ambition, which is a beautiful phrase, and I have to credit the person who came up with that, which is sitting over there, um, who talked about owning your ambition. I love that concept of how, how we encourage students to own their ambition. Right, so, this is what it looks like. It looks like this on the blog, and I thought I'd just unpack this a little bit. All I did was substitute the so what, the belligerent 14 year old, with us saying so that. And in this as well, what we've done, we, I, have done, <coughs> is separated the learning from the outcome. Very, very tiny tweak, that's all it is. So now learning outcomes are starting to read in a more relevant way with your STEM sentences there, that to be able to, you know, to analyse, to calculate, to show, and then being able to then say, so that. And just to share with you the impact of this, the impact, personally, has been how much sharper I am about planning my learning, because I'm constantly saying, so what, and I'm constantly wanting to be able to articulate the so that of the learning. And then this bit becomes lovely, because this bit, I can either say this, so you can construct or feel confident too, and I can go, okay, I can have a short-term goal there by the end of the lesson. I can, you know, you're going to be able to do this. So you're going to do this so that, and it might be by the end of the lesson. Or it could be, hugely, it could be so that when it comes to being interviewed for a job, you are confident enough to articulate and be clear about what your passions are, what your interests are, and what you're really good at. And it could be that, yeah, it might look a bit strange that you're spending 50 minutes focusing on this piece of text and then going to have to report it back to a pair and then you're going to have to do a mini presentation and that's great and usually you'd walk out of the room. But actually, how cool would it be if you understood the relationship between that thing that you're doing in year 8 or year 9 and the situations that you might find yourself in when you're 18, 19, 16, 17? And I was thinking, right, how do we get the big picture into the classroom? and get students to understand what we're banging on about all the time. And this also goes to whole school stuff. When I'm standing on the school gate, I, I just am relentless. I'm the irritating woman who says good morning to absolutely everybody. Absolutely everybody. Why? Well, it's so that those children who come in, and you, I'm sure you all do it as well when you greet people at the, at the classroom door, it's so that those children know that that moment, they've had eye contact, they matter, and also, I'm thinking about those children who might spend most of their day, they might spend all of their day not talking to anybody, not speaking out loud, not hearing their voice out loud. If you say good morning to somebody and you give them eye contact, I'm demanding that you connect with me and that you say good morning back. And when you go, when I notice on the gate here, further up the school, the sixth formers actually, sixth formers say good morning first. And it's lovely. So that's my outcome. By the end of the year, I want, I haven't worked out the percentage yet, but I want X percent of students to be saying good morning to me first. So that when they see me, they go good morning. And I want that to happen in break times and lunch times as well when I'm walking around the school site. And I want it to happen for all our teachers. Because think of the impact it's going to have on our community. Think of the impact that it's going to have wider than that. So that, for me, so that for me, made real sense. And that comes back to the so that. Why am I bothering to say good morning? Why am I insisting that you do that? every single morning. Same thing, uniform, top buttons. Why, why bother? What does it say about it? Why present your work? And then we can have conversations about the so that. And the lovely thing about this is that I can decide what that is, or actually as a group we can come up with a so that together. So there's an opportunity there for the co-construction of the learning outcome together, and the success criteria that goes with it. Okay? Two minutes, have a chat on your table. What do you think? Could you use it? How might it help? What's it made you think of? Over to you and I'll bring you back. Okay, go. <coughs> Thank you.